We must acknowledge that we do not have all the solutions yet, but there is still time to turn everything around. Now we can create action. Hi everyone, my name is Ashwini Deshpande. I'm an undergraduate student in London College of Fashion. To give you some background, I study fashion design and development, and I also have a diploma in fashion business. I'm a classical dancer, and I host something called the Fashion Vanguards podcast series, which talks about issues in fashion, especially sustainability. Today I'm here to speak to you about a project called Artsy that I'm now working on turning into a business. So this project started off because of collaboration between LCF and Microsoft. So the reason I applied to be part of this Accelerating the Future of Fashion program is because technology is exciting. It can change the entire framework of what you believe is possible in terms of design. What it can also do is create new possibilities that you never saw coming. In the paper, How Can AI Enable a Sustainable Future, published by Microsoft in association with PwC, there's the following statement. Each past industrial revolution has borrowed from the future to pay for the present by achieving economic growth through the degradation of our planet's health. Today's technological revolution must break this pattern and for the first time deliver sustainable economic growth. Now this is particularly true for the fashion industry. If you think about it, technology has made fashion products even faster, it's made it more cost efficient, it's also made it democratic with fast fashion. But at the same time, it's made it a lot more unsustainable. Artsy takes one step towards changing that. So it's basically a software that uses artificial intelligence to reduce the amount of fabric wastage in industry, mainly at a pattern cutting and design stage. So as a fashion design student, like any other fashion design student, I make clothes for various projects. And when I do this, I draft patterns according to my designs, which you can see a little example there. So those pieces would make that garment. And um, I lay these pattern pieces out on a piece of fabric, and I cut out the fabric. And when I do this, the amount of fabric that I have to throw away is appalling. So in industry, there is a small solution to that, a partial solution, I call it. You might have heard of Lectra, Gerber, Optifex. These are some of the big lay planning softwares. So these lay out the pattern pieces such that the wastage of fabric is minimized. However, despite using this technology, can you guess how much the fabric... Well, I gave that away. <laughs> <laughs> but how much would you have guessed? Most of you probably wouldn't have guessed a massive 15%, which if you don't think that's massive yet, let me put it into perspective. So there's about 400 billion square meters of textile produced in the world globally every single year. And if you look at it, even if, say, only 50% of that is used for clothing, which is probably like super on the lower end, even if 50% is used, that's still 30 billion square meters of fabric wastage every single year. And this is just at a very initial stage, before you even start buying clothes, before you throw it into landfills. This, these offcuts, pretty much all of them end up straight in landfills or in incinerators. Very, very little is actually recycled or used for other things. So um, is there a solution, you might ask? Maybe there's no solution. Maybe that's why nothing's been done about it. Well, if you look back to when fabric was scarce and expensive and difficult to manufacture, you can see several examples of zero-waste garments. So the toga, for instance, or the sari, the kimono. These are all examples of zero or very close to zero-waste garments. But the problem is, not everyone wears these things um, in today's world. We need more westernized um, clothing that we wear on a day-to-day -day basis that any of us are wearing in this room. And um, as a solution to that, there are pattern cutters and designers who are working towards zero-waste pattern cutting. So some of the experts in the field are Timo Rizman, who, along with Holly McQuillan, has written an incredible book called Zero Waste Fashion Design. Uh, Julian Roberts is another great example, a leader in the field of zero-waste pattern cutting. And as I mentioned, Holly McQuillan. However, despite these people making these efforts to make zero-waste fashion, it's still a very complex process. 
So I was introduced to zero waste pattern cutting a little while ago and I tried my hands on it. I tried a couple of different popular methods um, created by these incredible designers. And what I realized is that it's really difficult. It's very time consuming and it's very complicated. And also a lot of times it involves compromising your aesthetic. You can't get exactly the type of garment that you want. And um, the, so that was also around the time when I started exploring artificial intelligence and machine learning, cognitive machine learning specifically. And uh, Microsoft Azure actually has a feature called Custom Vision, which is a cognitive machine learning service, and that's where you get to try your hands um, as a user as a user in cognitive machine learning, and it's really simple and user-friendly. So I uploaded a database of just 30 patterns, sleeves, bodices, trouser blocks, things like that, just a very small database. And then I gave it a test pattern to see whether it would be able to recognize a new piece that it hasn't seen before. And actually, it did a pretty decent job of recognizing it. And the thing is, with a much larger database and a much more diverse database, it would be able to do a really good job identifying these pieces. And that got me thinking, can this be used to create zero-waste garments? Um, this is a little video of um, Azure. I'm about to use Azure Custom Vision. So I've added 10 patterns of back bodices, of front bodices, and of sleeves. And now I'm going to try it out and see if it's able to recognize a pattern it hasn't seen before. That's my back bodice. It says 99.9%, .9%, which is really good. But um, moving on to a larger a solution for zero waste, I started thinking, um, the problem is that zero waste pattern cutting is a very creative process. You have to drape or you have to freehand draw and then design along the way. And you can't teach a computer to do that. So how can you teach a computer to at least reduce waste if not create zero waste garments? Well, there's a couple of different solutions. The, one of the simplest solutions, yet one of the most effective solutions that Artsy uses, is quite simple to anyone who understands pattern cutting, really. It is to create seams in a garment. So you have three large pattern pieces there, and the minute you cut it up into four smaller pieces, you're saving that fabric, and it's a really simple concept. The problem is that um, as human beings, we understand that if you had a seam in a garment, it would change the aesthetic, but, and we can change the aesthetic exactly as we want to change it. We can add seam according to something that will look nice, but a computer doesn't know how to do that. It doesn't understand aesthetic. It doesn't have its own taste. Um, but what it can do, that a human can't do, is try out a million different options. So as a human, when you're pattern cutting and you're trying to add seams in a garment, um, you would think of the most obvious, like I thought of here, I thought of the most obvious solution. But a computer would be able to try one million different options in a second and tell you the one with the best, most optimized version of the lay plan. So once it's able to create those scenes, it can show you that optimum scene that would reduce the wastage to the largest extent. And it would show you that scene, and as a designer, you would be able to tell whether it looks good or not, purely from an aesthetic point of view. And then accordingly, you can accept or reject a design. And when you accept or reject a design, that software is able to store this information about each user and create its own database respective to each user, and hence, it's able to make better decisions during customization because it understands your brand's aesthetic, your aesthetic. Um, this process can also be speeded up, actually, with a process called machine learning, um, sorry, market basket within machine learning. So this is an example, I'm sure you've all shopped online before. When you're shopping for groceries online, see, if you add um, a frozen pizza to your basket, and then you add um, crisps, and you add some more popcorn. The, automatically, the website, in this instant, Asta, I'm not sponsored by Asta, but, um, so Asta would suggest something like, would you like to add chocolates? That would be its suggestion. What it wouldn't suggest is, do you want carrots or cucumbers? Because it knows you're, you know, the frozen pizza kind. And that's essentially what we'd be able to do with seams as well. It would be able to compare your data and other users' data, and essentially it would be able to understand you more quickly and more accurately. 
So basically, yeah, a gist of it is that RT acts as a helping hand for designers to design more sustainably because I think as designers, we do have a lot of pressure on us to design sustainably, but that isn't easy completely if it's on our own because there are so many different aspects of sustainability as well. And if you're just looking at this patent cutting wastage step, I'm, anyone who's tried zero waste patent cutting would understand how complex that is and how much time and effort it takes. And with Artsy, if you're able to design a beautiful garment without even thinking about how much fabric waste it is going to be and just feed that into a software and get a much more sustainable solution that drops your wastage from 20% to 3%, wouldn't that be wonderful? So um, after the Accelerating the Future of Fashion uh, program, I was selected to go to the US to visit Microsoft and speak to their experts. And um, apart from, well, taking way too many pictures, I also got to speak, speak to some experts in the field of AI, as well as some incredible people who are hacking the future of fashion. Um, I also got to present at the Microsoft Garage Space in the Silicon Valley, which is um, a disruptive entrepreneurial space. And um, from speaking to all of these incredible people, as well as experts in the fashion industry, mentors and peers, I've understood that Artsy is unique, that it's the only idea and software of its type, and that it can really help in the fashion industry. So the next step moving forward would actually be building the software, and um, with the help of Microsoft again. But before I get to that stage, I want to be able to understand better where Artsy would fit into industry, because it's better to create a software that fits well into industry than to create a software and then try and fit industry to accommodate that. Um, and in that process, I've also, oh, also, um, so I'm looking at collaborating with a brand called Rayburn, which is an innovative sustainable brand, where I'm also doing the placement, and we have some lovely representatives with us today. Um, and I think it would be really useful to try it out at a company like Rayburn or any sustainable innovative brand to actually understand exactly where it would fit into industry before the software is even built so that it can be built to address the nuanced needs of these sustainable innovative brands. Um, going to the business side of it, who would Artsy benefit? Well, if you're looking at it, um, well, obviously the biggest benefiters are Earth Fills, um, the planet, poor little polar bears, you know, when you want to save them, um, but also businesses. So businesses that want to reduce their carbon footprint. Um, if you look at Mintel's research, it actually shows that 65% of adults in the UK are trying to live more sustainably, sustainably than they were just a year ago, which is massive. Um, and a lot of the interest in sustainable clothing comes from the young crowd, which they're the ones who are going to have the spending power in the upcoming years. So that's who brands want to target. Um, So thank you everyone for coming here today to watch me speak. This is my journey so far, but there's a lot more to come. And if you want to follow my journey and see where Artsy goes, um, you can follow us on Instagram at artsy underscore software or on Facebook at artsy software for fashion. Thank you.